let's see. I say we should continue into here. Hi. So, to you koto wa? To you koto wa? Nani? Oh, okay. Yeah, sonna wa? Ah, sonna hazu hanai. So this one right here is the wa. It's kind of hard. So hazu is kind of treated like a noun. Sonna hazu hanai. Even though in English it probably wouldn't be a noun because it means like probabilityness, probability. So first off, we have toyu koto. Do you have any idea what that might mean? We have to, and then you. And koto. So it's like in this case. Yes. Or in any case. Or any case. Um, I like to think about it as like defining something. So we're defining the fact that we are in this certain location. So in other words, would be a common way to translate it. Toyu koto wa. And then what does Annie say in response to that? So first is Jack, then it's Annie. What does she say? Just like what? Kind of. This what is kind of going after this, like more like like in other words, what? What do you mean by in other words? Mm. Like what what are you um defining in this case? Because he's dropped off the previous sentence. And then he continues not to answer her question, of course, by saying, Yeah, sonna hazuwa nai. Do you know what hazuwa nai means? Um, hazuwanai. So, like, tondemonai, or it's obvious? Kind of the opposite of that, I would say. Hmm. Um, so what does nai mean? No, or negative. Yeah. It's a negative. And do you know what hazu means? Hazu. Uh, I used to. It means mm. probably, is what hazu basically probably. means. Probably. Um, so hazuwa nai means not probably, so no way, basically. It's used to kind of mean impossible. Mm. So sometimes you might hear if you say people say moody means impossible. Yeah. Moody moody. Um hazu moody is very personal. This is like saying no way in a like I don't want to do that kind of way. Hazuwa nai is more like scientific impossibility. Like it's saying there's there's it shouldn't be possible. There's no way, but there's no emotional attachment to it. Moody is very emotional, so that's why they say like don't moody, don't push yourself. Might is something people say. Yeah, but they don't say don't hazu. That'd be weird because <laughs> moody is very like a personal word. And they're describing the so not you know make hazu more aggressive. So like so not, I... such a thing as that is impossible. You know what the ya is telling us? Yeah, it's just no. Yep. No, such a thing as that is impossible. Um, and then what does um Jack do next? Mm, Jack wa, uh, mio. That's that a good mio? guess. This means neck. Neck. Neck is? Sinaka? Um, that's um back, so which is pretty close to the back. I mean the neck, but neck is actually kubi. Could be um so it's uh kubio kubio fute fute hitori koto no yo ni tsubuyan tsubuyaita. Hi. You know what tsubuyaku means? Tsubuyaku. It is to tsubuyaku. Not to climb. Tsubuyaku. To roll. Tsubuyaku has to be do, has to do with a way you say something. It's one of the saying words in Japanese. Um, it Tsubuyaku. means to mutter. Mm. So jakuwa tsubuyakus. So Jack mutters, and then we have no yoni right here. You know what yoni use is used for? It ends with a ni. No yoni. Uh, so. It's directed to the mutter. Mm -hmm. It basically is used to describe the way in which they mutter, which is hitori goto. So you might assume 
that this would mean like one person, like Hitori, like human being. And yeah. They mean like about one person. And apparently the kanji is totally different, but that is actually kind of what it means anyway. Hitori goto means talking to oneself. Hitori goto. Um, so you would think it'd be Hitori and then like koto from like kotoba is what you would assume yeah. it would be. Kotoba. But it has totally different kanji, which I think is hilarious to me. Tori, um, goto. To- totally different with the Hitori part. Koto is still um there. We still got the word kanji from you. But yeah, Hitori is not alone, even though it means alone in this context. <laughs> I mean, it always means alone mm. in that word, but just like one of those funny things that false well i guess it'd be like good friends but they're not actually the same coincident friends so yeah so he hitori hmm. goto no yoni to be yaku means to mutter as if you're talking to yourself as right. if you're monologuing um, a monologue is also a hitori goto so okay um, same word yep same word um do you know what he's doing as he's muttering he is kubi o futte. Kubi o futte. So his neck is in mm-hmm. a futte. True. So a normal posture. That's a good guess. So furu actually means to shake. Mm. So when you shake your neck, that has the same meaning in English as shaking your head. So yeah. Dak shakes his head and says and mutters as if talking to himself. Yeah, sonna hazu wa nai. No, that's impossible. And what else does Jack say? Ah, uh, sonna koto, sonna koto ari enai. Kitto, kore mabashiro? Maboroshi. Mabar, maboroshi da. Maboroshi. So, hmm. You know what arianai means? It's the same as hazianai. So impossible. Yeah, you're right. Both of these mean impossible. So sonakoto is impossible. So how do you think you would translate sonakoto? Sonakoto. So that's impossible. Yep. Sonakoto. Such a thing as that is impossible. Kito kore wa maboroshi. A maboroshi means like an illusion, basically. Hmm. Hmm. So, kito, that's an illusion. Ah, oh, maboroshi kito is meaning. illusion. Kito means like definitely. Oh, so definitely that's an illusion. Yep. This is definitely an illusion. And then what does Annie say? Ja, ano. Hmm. Or this is yes. Maburushi. Maburushi date you know. So first off we have Anokomo Maburushi da. What do you think that means? So that child is mysterious. Yes, that child is an illusion. An um, illusion. Maboroshi does kind of have an, a mysterious kind of connotation in it, but it, it, it tends to be like phantom illusion is probably the the version they're trying to pick for this, since the idea is not mm-hmm. that uh, this context wise. But a mystery is probably one of the definitions of the word, but it doesn't make sense in this context to be that child's a mystery. In English, it doesn't really make this make yeah. sense. Yep. Um, and then we have te you no. Um te you. Te you no. What do you think that's saying? It is to say. Yes, it is to say. So in this case, it's like saying, so you're saying in this in this context, the yours um context-based so you're saying that that child is also an illusion or you could also argue that this is saying in other words that child is an illusion so you can argue it's um toyu koto toyu 
the in other words or Bird, that so. she's saying or she's translating what Jack's saying. So you're saying that's that child's also an illusion? Do you know what the ja is telling us? Uh that's just a sound effect, I think. Kind of. It is just a sound, it is basically a sound effect, but it really normally translates very easily to the English word well then. Ja. Ja. Oh, okay. That well then, ja. then well, then that means that child's also an illusion. Um so here is a new kanji. This is um hiro. So hiro geru. Do you know what hiro geru hiro means? Geru. Um, it sounds super familiar. Hiro geru. It's to something. To. It is um to spread out. Why hiro geru? Hiroi. Ah. Oh, yep. Okay. It yeah. is from hiroi. Yep. Hiro geru and hiroi are the sameish word. Hiro geru. Okay, so let's go read this part right here. <clears throat> Jack to Jack to Annie, what? Uh, I know she done. Oh, so this is a maddo maddo window. Yep, maddo no shita shita ni e me o yatta. Balls. So first off, we have Jack and Annie, and they're going to be doing um, Yaru. Do you know what Yaru means? To do. Yeah, yeah, to do. Say. So they're going to do their eyes, which sounds weird in English, but this means basically to put your eyes somewhere, basically, like the the look towards something, meo yaru, which is in the direction oh, okay. of mado no shita. Mado no shita. All right, so direction of under the window. Yep. So in this context, it's um through the window. So if you look out and under the window, so like under the treehouse. So not like looking at the floor of the treehouse oh, but okay. on the other side. But that that's not like too obvious just by the words. Looking under the window, it's more context-based, I would say. Um, so here's the next line. Mm. Katsu no... Oh, no, that's kashi. Kashi no hon no. That's no hon. That is tree, which is ki. Kashi no ki no... Uh, this is actually ta. So, first off, what do you think our subject is of the sentence? It is putteradon. Yep. And what do you think the putrodon is doing? Is it sitting? What is it doing? It is. Hmm. <clears throat> which means standing up or rising yep. up. It is standing. So the putrodon is standing. And what is it doing as well as standing? Tubasa o hirogete. It's just like hirogete. Oh, so. Spreading out his wings. Yep, he's spreading out his wings. And what size are his wings? Does he have small wings? Wide wings? Big oh, wings? No. So yep. big wings. Yep. And where is he? Where is this putradon? He is Kashi no Ki no Nimoto. So in the evergreen tree house floor. Close. So or ground. Uh, Nemoto basically means by the roots, I would say. You could think about it as. Oh, okay. So this is root, and moto is like the origin. So the area where the roots come out of the tree, in other words. So in English, you just would say by the base of the tree, would be if you wanted to illustrate that. 
So we just would use the word base to mean um, nemoto, the origin of roots. Okay, and then what's happening over here? What's Annie doing? Hi, konnichiwa. Uh, konnichiwa. Hi, konnichiwa. Annie ga okina koite koite. Um, hibi? Uh, yo. Yo Mm. So, so Annie. Oh, hello. Yep. I like to think about it as hey, oi. Then we have hello. Oi. Hey, hello. Oi. Konnichiwa. Hello. So, yep, that is what Annie says. And what kind of tone of voice do you think she's saying this in? Is she whispering mm. it? What's, what's she doing? Annika. <laughs> Okina koi. So a very loud voice. Yep, she does it in a loud voice. And the yobu here, it's pretty easy to tell by context. What do you think this is telling us? What is Annie doing with a big voice? Yobi kaketa. So she is yobi lips. From kaketa. yobu. Ooh. Yobu's not lips, is it? It's not lips. That'd be kuchibiru. Kuchi, hi. Uh, kuchi's mouth. Kuchibiru's lips. Kuchibiru's lips. Oh, okay. Hi. This right here is yobu, which is a verb. Um, yobu. And it means to call. Because she's calling out, saying, Oi, konnichiwa. Oh, yobu. Hi. Yep. So this is a compound mm. verb. So we have stem form of yobu, which is yobi. And then we have kakeru. Do you know why it's not just Annie ga oki na koi de yobimashita? Instead, it's yobi kaketa. You know why kaketa has been added to this? Uh, yobimashita would probably make sense. I think it, it would make sense. It doesn't not make sense, but kakedu helps add a little bit more flavor to the sentence. It's kind of like you hmm. can just say hashita, but if you said awatete hashita, you know, oh, they're running in a panic or they're. Or if you said tobikonda rather than just like jumpushta, you know, they're jumping down, but it's like more, it just helps to illustrate things. Kakeru basically means to start a conversation. Start a convo. Conversation. Yeah. So whoever is starting something, starting the talk, you can add kakeru to mean that. So you will also see, for example, hanash kakeru, which is literally to start having a conversation, a back and forth with somebody. So yobi kakeru just means she calls out and it's making it very obvious that Annie is the instigator of this. She is the one that is going to start calling out. Versus if it just said yobu, then it doesn't really insinuate anything. Uh, mm. So it's very, so a lot of times you will not see verbs by themselves. You'll see these compound verbs. And sometimes the meaning will change a bit, like with yobi dasu. Which can, which you know, has the call and to appear word dasu, right? So yeah. calling plus appearing is to summon, right? Hi. So that that's how these are kind of used to help illustrate extra meaning, even if you don't necessarily need it. So yeah, to start calling. Okay. Here's our next sentence. Um. She too, Kokoni Il Kotoga Bidida. Is that B? Oh, it's Bare Bishita. Bare, hi. Bare Tara Mazite, you Tadaro. Hmm, is this you? You're right that the dictionary uh, form of this is you. Itta. Itta. Not you. Mm. Hi, hi, hi. And this right Itta, here hai. is just shush. Shush. Shish. Yeah. So a lot of times small mm. too, well, we put that at the end of things to kind of show that they're being kind of harsh with it. So shh. So it kind of helps show that they're yelling something kind of. Um Hi. so um we're gonna start with bare. This is from bareru. You know what bareru means? Um bareru. Is 
sounds familiar. It's a pretty common word. It basically means that you'll be found out. And basically, like, normally, like, it's something found out that you should not have done. So, baretara is if we are found, then it's going to be mazui. So, what does that mean? Bad. So, if we are found, it will be difficult. Yep. It will be. In this case, um, bad would probably be how we translate it in English, but. Mazui, hi. Um, I think you're thinking of muzukashi. Uh, which actually means difficult. Um, mm. Yeah, mazui is more like bad or like disgusting or something. <laughs> like if you eat food and you don't like it, you might say mazui. Ah. Mazui. <laughs> um, um, so the subject of the sentence has been dropped. Even though we have a ga right here, this isn't subject ga. This ga marks the topic, which is... Um, the, the act of being um, caught, kokuni iru, act of being here. So the subject is Jack. Okay. So Jack is, had itad. What does that mean? Jack has said. Yes. That. Then we have this te right here. What do you think this te is doing with the verb said? Mm. Te ita. Yeah. So he something happened and then he tated. so then he said so when you're talking about the something happening to that to is actually never shortened into te um the only to that's shortened into te is quotation to uh sometimes um quotation to will include the verb depending on like the context and stuff like to you will sometimes be fully shortened into just te um but whenever you see small te it's I'm pretty sure it's like always quotation to and not and to and also not um, cause and effect to. Hmm. So right here, it's just saying this is a quote. So I said, koko ni iru koto ga baretara mazui is um, what that says. So what did Jack Don't say look. earlier? Koko ni iru koto ga baretara mazui. So if we're caught here, it will be bad. Exactly. Yep. And then he added this daro to basically mean like, didn't I say this? I said this, didn't I? Would be kind of how we say didn't that. Didn't I? Right. Yeah. Mm. But specifically, it's like I probably said this, but it means like, didn't I say this? Like, were you not listening to me? Um. And then what does Annie say in response? Dare ni bare do you know? Sore ni koko ba koko wa koko hai koko wa doko na no? You know what dare means? Dare means who? Dare ka? Yeah. Well, not dare ka. Dare. So, dare ni bareru. What do you think that means? So, who's getting caught? That's a good guess. But, um, baredu, the person being caught, I believe, takes wa. So, ni means, like, who will catch us? Who who will mm. find us? Um, do you know why these sentences are ending with no? Oh, because it's feminine. It is feminine. So, when we have a question mark at the end of the sentence and no... That's feminine. So if if Jack was saying this, he'd say dare ni bare do. He just would he would just have that with a question mark. Um though maybe he might add zo. Because no adds a little bit of a zo like connotation to the question. But it's mostly just <clears throat> adding femininity. Um so soreni, you know what that tells us? Soreni means it's like soreni. Like that, but that means kind of yes. Um, it sore is mean that sore ni together basically means on top of that is kind of how I'd say that. So like furthermore on top of that. So she says first off, mm. who's gonna find it? Who's gonna catch us? <laughs> Not on top of that. Koko wa doko na no? She's basically saying this is more important mm. anyway. And what's koko wa doko? 
Cocoa Toco is where is here or yep. where are we? Yeah, where are we? Perfect. Um, the na is just here so we can add the no. You can't just say Cocoa Toco no. That sounds disgusting. That's weird. Uh, so I'm just letting you know that's why mm. not in here. It's here so we can add the no so it sounds feminine. Uh, it's not here because this is a verb and Coco is a noun. So it's just a conjugation type thing. Um, and then what does Jack say next? Uh, sore, sore o ima. Oh, we saw this kanji last time. It is castle, I think. Mm, that's Oshiro. Oshiro, I think, looks Oshiro. different, actually. Oshiro. This is what Oshiro looks like. This oh, wow. right here is a verb, and it means to think, but it's not omo. Kangai? You know what the other? Yep, it is kangai. Kangai do. Kangai teru. Kangai teru in da. Hi. So we have the particle o here. What is that? What? So this it's attached to this and what? And sore o ima. Uh... So, this is attached to the ima. It's not attached to the hair. ima. So normally, weird. when we see sentences in Japanese, the ima is at the beginning. It'd be ima sore o kangaiteru. This that this is just hmm. showing our ability to move things around in Japanese. Um. So, all they did. That's also why there's a comma here. So in text, if they move stuff around, a lot of times they'll have a comma. Uh, to help make it more obvious that they did that. Uh, same with in English. We'll do commas as well to kind of show that we move things. Um, so it's sore o kangairu. What does that mean? Sore o kangairu. So sore after that think. Or so sore on its think. own it just means that. So sore mm. ni with the ni basically means on top of that. It doesn't really have any after connotation. After would be like ato, right? Um, ato. So, but sore just means that. So that I'm kangai doing. I'm kangaiing that. Yeah. And what does kangai do mean? To think. Yeah. So I'm thinking about that. So what he's thinking about is the koko wa doko nano, which is where are we? Or perhaps who would catch us. But mostly the where are we. So he's saying, I'm thinking about that ima. What's the ima telling us? Ima. Now. Yep. I'm thinking about that now. So in English, we could put the now at the beginning or the end of the sentence. I'm thinking about that now. Or now I'm thinking about that. Um, the I'm thinking about it now is more close to this one. So by putting it over here, it helps have that little bit more stress on the now part of the sentence. So I'm thinking mm. about it right now versus if you had it at the front, it sounds a little bit um, not panicked. Ima, sore o kangaiteru. It feels like a little bit robotic. So it wouldn't be incorrect, but this gives it more emotion. So it's making the ima feel more like in your face. That's kind of how I put it. Because it's in a slightly mm. weird location. Um. And this, do you know why this n does here? Inda. Inda. So this n da, rather than just ending with um sore, sore o ima kangairu, which you could end it like that, that'd be fine. Inda basically makes it into an explanation. So he's basically saying, well, I'm thinking about that right now. Okay. <laughs> Can't really like really explain that because we don't really have this in English um but in japanese if you feel like you're kind of explaining something a lot of times you'll add that to the end of the sentence but it's not as aggressive as saying like because or stuff like that just kind of sentences and next is going to be this konnichiwa ani ga mo ichido um yubikaketa hmm close it's not you do you know what this verb means uh, kubi means neck. Um, so you're right. Kubi does mean neck, but this right here is a verb. We have a verb right here. This is kubi a kakita. verb. We saw it a little bit long ago, but what do you think this konnichiwa is telling us? What kind of verb konnichiwa. do you think koni, what, konnichiwa would take? 
Uh, it would take a mutter. Mm, it could. It definitely could. But mm. if you're muttering konnichiwa, that'd be like konnichiwa. Do you think Annie would mutter konnichiwa? That's more of a mm, probably not. Jack action. Yeah, that's mm. a little weird. Um, that'd be tsubuyaku. Tsubuyaku would be a mutter. Tsubuyaku. Tsubuyaku. Um, this right here is to call out. To call out. Ah, uh, yubi. Yobu. Yobu. Mm. Yep. Yobi kakeru. So Annie called out moichido. Konnichiwa. Hmm. So one more time, yep. Annie called out. Konnichiwa. Exactly. Yep. Annie called out one more time. Hello. And this is where we're going to stop the reread mm. and next week it looks like we'll finish that reread to this color real quick and now we're going we're at the halfway point so we'll be switching over to the other um zoom thingy I, 